Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? Who are you? I'm Bill Bailey. I've come home. Tickle those ivories, Mr. Piano Man, please. When I first went on Vaudeville, the Old West had not yet been discovered. At the Golden Horseshoe Presents The Wonderful World of Color. Our program this week from Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, The Golden Horseshoe Review. Attention, please. Will Walt Disney's special guests please go to the Golden Horseshoe in Frontierland? Thank you. Howdy, folks. I'm glad you all could be with us for the 10,000th performance of the Golden Horseshoe Review here in Frontierland in Disneyland. Now, uh, for this special occasion, we call it the Augmented Golden Horseshoe Review. And that's because, in addition to our usual stars, Wally Bogue and uh, Betty Taylor, we have some special guest stars. Now, we got a real rootin', tootin', shootin' show. And I've got my table reserved for you. So, right over that away and through those little bitty old doors and tell them Walt sent you. Folks, there are no seats left. We're full up. It's all right, Marshal. We're holding Walt's table for them. Sorry. Please follow me. Make yourself comfortable, and we hope you enjoy our show.
proud to introduce Miss Betty Taylor. Hello, everybody from Maine to California. This is the Golden Horseshoe. The show is mighty spicy. We thought we ought to warn you. April, June, and January, who's the guy we're gonna marry? If you are a stranger, just say howdy, stranger. We will soon be friends that way. The welcome man is out today at the Golden Horseshoe Cafe. All the welcome man is out today at the Golden Horseshoe Cafe. Well, I'm Slew Foot Sue, and I'd like to welcome all of you to this gala occasion. And now, if a certain person is listening, wherever he may be, I have a message for him. She mows the whole night long. I'll do the cooking, honey. I'll pay the rent. I know I've done you wrong. Remember the rainy evening? I drove you out with nothing but a party's call. I know I was to blame. Well, ain't that a shame, Bill Bailey? Won't you please come home? Come She moves the whole night long. I'll do the cooking, honey. I'll pay the rent. I know I've done you wrong. Remember the plan, amen? I drove you out with nothing but a fine tooth comb. I know I was to blame. Well, ain't that a shame? But Bailey, won't you please come home? Come home. Come home. If you're wondering about that chair, it's for one of our guest stars, a well-known personality of stage and screen, Jean Sheldon.
Now, an early American hoedown. And in this square dance, the calls are done by one of our guest stars, the lovely Annette. Long ago when Buffalo roamed the prairie, long before the white man and his gun, red man did this dance before each round up. Listen and we'll show you how it's done. Grunt. Do a hop before the buffalo hunt. Squat in front with brave in line. Do the buffalo round up. Give a war hoop and hear the war drums beat. Grab a partner, first one that you meet. Hand on shoulder, form a line. Then you hop into a serpentine. It's so easy and it's fun. Do the buffalo round up. Buffalo Roundup, give a war and hear the war drums beat. Swing your partner, sweep her off her feet. Build a teepee through you go. Every Indian a bend and low. It's so easy and it's fun. Do the Buffalo Roundup, do the Buffalo Roundup. Over the years, we've had many famous people in our audiences, like presidents and kings and princes and princesses and, and many motion picture and stage personalities. And so once again, we're happy to know that one of the most beloved and all-time greats of show business is here now to honor our 10,000th performance. So let's give a big welcome to Ed Wynn. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. It would be appropriate if Mr. Wynn would take a bow up here on the stage. We have spent over 60 years of his life. Would you? I'd be delighted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Wynn, it's wait, nice. Wait, wait. Don't call me Mr. I'd love to call you Betty. Would you call me Ed? All right. Ed, it's nice to have you with us. Well, I'm very, very happy to be here. Very thrilled, as a matter of fact. Takes me back many years. I actually played some theaters like this with footlights like those. Oh, in the Old West? Well, to be perfectly honest about it, when I first went in vaudeville, the Old West had not yet been discovered. <laughs> Geronimo wasn't even a juvenile delinquent. Oh. <laughs> Is it true that you were on the opening bill at the famous Palace Theater? Yes, yes. I was on the, the only American act on the opening bill. I'm very proud of that. Oh. Yes, that was in 1913. What made you think of that? That's nearly 50 years ago. I remember the first joke I ever told him, Vaudeville. I told him, here's the joke I told him. <laughs> Don't blame me for it. <laughs> a little boy was yelling for help in the river. A policeman heard him, and he took a dive in the river, and he grabbed the boy, and he rescued him, and he put him on the pier, and as he was drying the little boy off, he said to him, he said, son, how did you come to fall in the river? And the little boy said, I didn't come to fall in, I came to fish. <laughs> Awful, huh? <laughs> Weren't you called the perfect fool in 1903? Oh, no, 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 not in those days, no, no. In those days, I was called the uh, boy with the funny hat. Oh, would you <laughs> tell me about it? 
tell you, I'll show it to oh, you. Oh, good. Sure, I have it here in the box. Oh, in a hat box? No, 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 right here. Oh. This box here. Here it is. Oh. Now, it may look silly to you, but it isn't, you see. <laughs> the college boys used to wear hats like this, Panama hats. At the turn of the century, this was the style. Now, I used it as a gimmick. I would tell a joke, and if the joke wasn't funny or the audience, I was afraid they wouldn't laugh, I'd, I'd change the shape of the hat. That's clever. Yeah, well, that's what I did all through the act. You see, for instance, I'd tell another joke, and if they didn't laugh, I'd change the shape of the hat again and do something like that. You know, you. I can remember telling one joke in the city, I forget where it was, but they didn't laugh. When I put the hat on, they screamed. You know? I like that. They just screamed. Then, of course, I always had a finish, which everybody has to have in portable. And the next one, of course, was up like this. See, see? I did that, and then I do that tomorrow. That's the story of the boy in the funny hat. Ed Vaudeville must have been wonderful. Yes, it was. It was. It was very lovely and very romantic. It, oh, it was great. I liked Vaudeville. Say, what? with your help, we can turn back the clock all the way back to the old Vaudeville days. If you'll change your costume, I'll change mine, and we'll do something together, all right? All right. But changing costumes takes time, and... Oh, don't worry. You just leave everything to me. All right. Would you, uh, would you please open the curtains? <laughs> now, I've got something right here. <laughs> I always carry it with me. This here. What in the world is that? Oh, just an old invention of mine. I'd be lost without it. <laughs> eh? <laughs> there you are. A dressing room. Yes, yes. Always carry it with me, because I never know when I'm going to be called upon, just like now up here. <laughs> but I'm always hoping. Tell you what we'll do. Let us change our costumes, and I'll meet you out here. Well, all right. <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Say, this is ridiculous. Something went wrong. It sure did. Well, you know, I haven't used this thing for so long. You know, now let me see. Never happened to me before, you know. <laughs> oh, now I remember. I know exactly what it is. <laughs> there. His and hers. Well, there is a difference, you know. <laughs> Shall we try it again? The sooner, the better. Well, first, we have to get rid of the dressing room. Stage hand? <laughs> Would you please take this uh, dressing room? <laughs> and my son, Keenan, can't understand why I won't retire. <laughs> you know, Betty, you got me in the old vaudeville things now. In those days, we would always open an act with a joke. Would you be the straight woman for me? Yes, I will. Well, you have to ask me three questions, and then I'll tell this joke. Uh -huh. The first question you ask me is, who are you? Mm -hmm. Then you say, who are you looking for? Then you say, do you think you'll find them? And I'll crack the joke. Have you got it? I've got it. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a prop goes with this, too, you know. All right. See, from the railroad, you see? Uh-huh. Now, watch this here. <laughs> now, go and ask me the question. Who are you? I am a detective. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for the president of this railroad. Do you think you'll find him? I don't know, but I'm on his tracks. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of awful, isn't it? And I'll tell you, Betty, in a two-act, when it was a girl, she always sang a song. If you'll sing, I'll play for you. On what? Oh, on my piano. I have a piano out here in the parking lot. In the parking lot? You wait here. I'll bring it to you. You just stay right there. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Oh. Oh. Save me, it's an unusual piano. <laughs> oh. Do you really, really like it? Yes, I do. Huh? Oh, it's great. Mm -hmm. Say, this would be great for salesmen to pedal their pianos from door to door. Oh, yeah. Well, here's my card. <laughs> Half piano will travel. <laughs> well, can you accompany me on it? Oh, with this piano, I can accompany you any place. <laughs> you know, Betty, in the old days of Vaudeville, we used to try to think of very unusual things, you know. Uh -huh. So I'd like you to sit up here on the piano. Oh, I'd love to, but I don't think I can sing that high. 
Oh, don't be silly. Some of the greatest singers in the world have been up here. Oh, really? Really. Al Jolson, Jimmy Durante, Eddie Cantor, Edith Pia, Jane Froman, Dinah Shaw. Well, how do I get up there? Well, do you see a ledge down there? Yes. Well, put your left foot on that. Uh-huh. There's another thing there. Put your right foot on. Give me a hand here. Yes. Now, don't be afraid. Come right ahead. There. Follow that car. <laughs> I wish I'd have thought of that one. <laughs> Are you all right up there, Betty? Just fine, but it'll be the first time I ever sang Side Saddle. <laughs> you look so young and beautiful up there, Gee whiz. If you were only 20 years older and I was 20 years younger, oh, no, I'd, I'd still be too old. <laughs> and I had no idea you played so well. Well, I should. I come from a very musical family, you know. Oh? Yes, I had an uncle who was a, really a bass also on what, what do you call those? Uh, a bass viol. Bass viol. My uncle played a bass viol for eight years, but he had to give it up because it hurt him socially. But why? Well, every time he'd ask a young lady to dance, he, he'd grab her around the neck with one hand and slap her on the back with the other, you know. <laughs> 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 Would you do something for me? Would you sing a song for me? I'd love to. Well, it's, this is really old water, but it's beautiful. Tea for two. Oh, yes. That's the one. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I think it would be much more graceful if the maestro and the rest of the musicians accompanied you. You know, then I won't show off. What key do you sing that in? D flat. D flat. Boys, I'll, I'll give you the cue. Picture me. Upon your knee, just tea for two and two for tea, me for you and you for me alone. There's nobody near us to see us or hear us, no friends or relations on weekend vacations. We won't have it now. That we own a telephone, dear. Day will break and I'll awake and start to bake a sugar cake for you to take for all the boys to see. desire for fun and entertainment was just as prevalent as it is today. And in a typical frontier town, it was the local emporium of thirst where all... <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, we're just having a little fun. You can shout, but don't shoot. Now, if you want some entertainment, just say so. Jean, would you oblige our customers with a musical rendition? Oh, what number you should play? Why, sleep, of course. It's the only one you know. Get out of here. Yeah, we want girls. Boys, wait. I've got a surprise for you. 
She's a new singer who just arrived on the stagecoach from Terre Haute. And she's applying for a job here. Now you're talking, Sue. Oh, that's more like it. Give me some new talent. Come on in, honey. Why don't you step right up there and show us what you can do? Thank you. don't like to be reminded of home and mother. Oh, I guess I should have told you that they like their entertainment to be gay and exciting. Songs like that will make this a ghost town. Oh. Oh, I think I know what you mean. Good. Okay, maestro, hit it! <laughs> Piano man, please tickle those ivory keys. No one can noodle the way that you doodle those ricky ticky melodies. Mr. Piano man, you do what nobody can do. Your trembling tremolos are gonna drive me to ruin. Your left don't know exactly what your right hand is doing. Oh, Mr. Piano man, please. Notorious romance of the gaslight era. Thank you very much. 
much, but uh, who are you? I'm Bill Bailey. I've come home. Oh, no, you're not. No, I'm Wally Bogue, that loud, long, lean, loquacious, sometimes a conic loon kick who loves to deal, delve, and dabble in delirious dialogue and dynamic dissertations, or in other words, I'm a traveling salesman. Oh, you have things to sell there. Well, why don't you show all those charming people out there exactly what you have to sell in that carpet bag? And I wish you luck. Okay, Foot Foot, I'll do the best I can. You're staring at me. Well, all together now, I, Josh Maroff, stagecoach from Chicago, got to catch a steamboat to St. Lou. I have a lot of things I want to sell you, so let's proceed with what we have to do. That rhyme with St. Lou, I hope. Why have you there? Well, I'll just take a look in my purse here and see what we have. Here we have the gambler's friend. This always makes a sale, and you make your fortune with these. They never fail. Look at here, Niagara Falls. From the Canadian side. Niagara Falls frozen. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Little shooting iron with seven notches. Count them. Seven! Nobody sleeps while I'm on. Let's see what it is. What have you there? This will never sell. <laughs> Baby, Davy Brockett. <laughs> what else you got? Well, I guess I can have a little something here. A little something called a bogaloon, a little toy balloon that will enable you to tell people's personality just by the way they blow it up. Let me show you how it works. You see, the average of normal person will blow a balloon something like that. That's the average of normal type. And then we have the straightforward type, Dave. <laughs> type. Some people are a little backwards in life. Naturally, the backward person, they... <laughs> Oh, I've got talent. <laughs> then we have the scatterbrain. Their mind jumps around a bit. Their balloon would do the same thing. <laughs> there we are. Hey, right <laughs> yeah, I think we have a little, uh, little income tax trouble right there. <laughs> now, to get the message, you have the person wrap up all of these thoughts, put them all together, and by doing that, you find out something more about them. I've made quite a name for myself doing this. I don't like it either, but... <laughs> Say, now, you've heard of pink elephants? Here's an elephant in color right here, looking a little something like that elephant right there. <laughs> oh, it's nothing I can tell by the applause. Now, let's uh, take his little old trunk here now, make a little old suitcase. There we are. I had an uncle who used to see elephants when he was drunk. He was a character. He was a kleptomaniac. And that's a person who finds things before you lose them, but he's reformed now. He only steals things to begin with A. A watch, A car, A purse, A watch. <laughs> Ava Gardner. Here's a shy, sort of a rabbit type. See the rabbit sitting up looking a little like that. Did you hear about the little rabbit who washed his hair and couldn't do a thing with her? <laughs> oh, wake up now. Some of you are listening. This is just a normal husband leading the life of a dog, but he's a gay, debonair, French poodle type dog. Little we'll income tax up there again. <laughs> I had to sell my dog. He ran in front of a streetcar and it cut off his tail. I sold him wholesale. I couldn't retail him. <laughs> oh, perhaps you're right. Here's a uh, nervous type. They're afraid to blow a balloon too hard. They leave about that much, then they cheat. They give it that. I didn't do anything. Contact. There we are. Right there. We'll just wrap up all of these thoughts now. Nerve wracking, isn't it? And see what we have here. Oh, I think we see you. Hi there. What, what's your name there, huh? Well, come on up here. I'll give you a souvenir to take home. Hi. What's your name? You got a name? Yeah. What is it? Um... That's a good name. I like that. How old are you? Five. Five? You married yet? No, you look happy. I can see that. What's, what's your favorite kind of dog, no name? Um... Favorite kind? Hot dog. <laughs> well, do you like this police dog? I'm waving at you here. Yeah. That's good. He's in the Secret Service. You might not have recognized him there, you see, but he's really a pretty nice dog there, anyhow. Tell you what, I want you to... Good to see you. You afraid of germs or something? Shake hands. That's it. 
This is a police dog. You take it home and feed it hot air three times a day. And if you can't, you ask your mother. I'm sure she has plenty of hot air around the house. And I want you to notice, sorry, sir. <laughs> Put your nose right there. Now, that's the magic twist there. You can practice when you get home. Thanks for coming up, and I'll see you later. Remember my name, Wally Bogue. You'll be reading about me in the newspapers. I smoke in bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Here's an interesting type. Here's a show off now. Don't worry about a thing. Don't worry about a thing. You can worry a little now. I lose more balloons that way. Hey, Marv, do you know a little song entitled When They Operated on Father, They Opened Mother's Mail? Chuck, chuck, chuck. It was my father they operated on when they opened Mother's Mail. You folks don't care. Do you? Father cared. You see, the nurse, she... <laughs> I better not. Tell you what, chaps, I'll sing a song and you chaps string along because it's pretty. It's pretty bad. It goes something like this. When they Oh, it's so hot in here today. What'd you expect, feathers? <laughs> This is a Hollywood convertible. <laughs> and he looks so young. I heard you, madam. <laughs> All together now, I, just got off stage coach from Chicago, Silk and Steamboat to St. Louis. Hope you like the things I had to sell you because I, uh, I, uh, I just finished. Thank you, Wally Bold. And now, I'd like to tell you the story of the roughest, toughest, rootin' tootin' shootin' this cowboy in the Wild West. And incidentally, he's my boyfriend, Pecos Bill. <laughs> Pecos Bill was quite a cowboy down in Texas. He was a western superman, to say the least. He was the roughest, toughest critter, never known to be a quitter, cause he never had no fearful man or beast. So if you are, yeah, oh, the toughest critter west of the Alamo. Operated on father. <laughs> I got the fastest draw in the West. You want to see my fast draw? Yeah! You want to see it again? <laughs> Once there was a drought that spread all over Texas, so to sunny California he did go. And though the gag is kind of corny, he brought rain from California. That's the way we got the Gulf of Mexico. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 oh. For the toughest bitter west of the Alamo. Once a band of rustlers stole a herd of cattle. But they didn't know the herd they stole was Bill's. But when he caught them crooked villains, why, he knocked out all their pulling. And that is why there's gold in them by him. <laughs>
Douglas lost his way while traveling across the desert. It was 90 miles across the burning sand. He knew he'd never reach the border if he didn't get some water, so he got a stick and dug the real grand. So he got it. Indians did a war dance. Pego started shooting up their little game. He gave his Redskins such a shake-up while they jumped out of the makeup. That's the way the Painted Desert got its name. So you got it. Once he roped a raging cyclone out of nowhere. And he straddled it and settled down with ease. While the cyclone bucked and flitted, Pecos ruled a swoop and lit it, and he tamed it on, it went down to a breeze. So you be a hey, 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 for the toughest critter west of the Alamo. Now old Billy swam the ocean clear to Paris. And he saw them kicking and Paris. That dancer gave old Bill a willy, so he roped them a little filly. Anybody back to that field, please?
with you. You're at the Golden Horseshoe. So long, everybody. We hope we entertained you. You're at the Golden Horseshoe. If we met as strangers, we're no longer strangers. Please come back again. To